It is very much a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Saul Rubenstein. Professor Rubenstein is Associate Director of School of Management and Labor Relations Center for Workplace Transformation at Rutgers University. And he has served as a member of the New Jersey Employment and Training Commission Task Force on High Commitment Work Organizations. He was a 2001 recipient of the Outstanding Young Scholar Award from the Industrial Relations Research Association. His research has been funded by the National Science Foundation and the Sloan Foundation and has been published in Industrial and Labor Relations Review, Organization Science, Industrial Relations, the Economic and Labor Relations Review, Advances in Industrial and Labor Relations, Journal of Labor Research, and numerous book chapters. Very well published. He is, as I said, going to be leading a breakout session tomorrow on labor management collaboration, the impact on student achievement. And he has authored a groundbreaking report on this topic, as Ken said earlier, um, focusing on ABC Unified. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Dr. Saul Rubenstein. I want to thank the organizers for asking me to give a couple of remarks. As Ken said earlier, this is a non-keynote speech. Uh, this is going to be under 10 minutes. I've got my watch right here. so. My purpose here tonight is to simply stimulate some discussion at your tables and uh, perhaps to preview some of the issues for tomorrow. Um, I've been studying uh, union management partnerships uh, across the private and public sector for more than 25 years. The last 10 years have been exclusively on partnerships in public education. I also served as a school board member. And for the last eight years, I've focused a lot of attention on the ABC Unified School District that you heard about earlier looking at the impact uh, of partnership on teaching and learning. I've had extraordinary access because of Dr. Mary Sue and, and Ray Gear, and I'm very, very grateful for that. And so much of what I'm going to present to you today um, is based on that. <laughs> so what do we mean by partnerships? And what I'm talking about is an approach to public school improvement that's based on district and school level. Both are critical, not simply district level. Union management collaboration that empowers educator collaboration in schools and creates innovation from educators within districts to make these changes not imposed from the outside with a focus especially on teaching and on learning. And that focus is on these kinds of issues. I think this list is really, really important. It comes out of research that I've done uh, with colleagues at Rutgers looking at world-class partnerships across the country, urban and rural, north and south, east and west, AFT and NEA. And these are the areas in which we see collaboration taking place. When, when I say collaboration, it means that each of these areas is worked on jointly by administrators and by union leaders and by teachers. Curriculum, evaluation, peer assistance and review, mentoring, professional development, K-12 articulation, cross-disciplinary integration, scheduling, teacher orientation, coaching, teacher academies, textbook selection, instructional practice, technology planning, those are done jointly. Typically you would say that's the administrator's responsibility. The point here is that in these partnership arrangements, this is what is done together. It's a joint process. Why else would you do it? This is a, what we would call a regression analysis. It shows the relationship between partnership across the bottom the horizontal axis, and performance improvement on API scores from 2011 and 2012 in the ABC Unified School District. I didn't draw that line. The statistical package drew the line. This shows a positive correlation between the quality of partnerships in the ABC Unified School District and the performance improvement by school from one year to the next. Each one of those green dots is a school at ABC Unified. This is statistically significant. There's less than one chance in 100 that this result is by chance or spurious. It controls for poverty. We controlled for the percentage of students on reduced or free price lunch in each of the schools. And after you control for poverty, this is the relationship you get, that you still get a strong positive correlation between the strength of the partnership between the union and the administration in the school and student achievement. Roughly, you get a 10% gain if you compared the lower districts, uh, the, the, the lowest partnership uh, scores in the district versus the highest partnerships. You, if you moved a school from the lowest to the highest, you'd get about 76 points on the API. 
which is roughly a, a 10 percent improvement. It explains 54. The partnership explains 54 percent of the variation in API improvement from one year to the next. We can talk more about that tomorrow. I can't talk about it tonight. I only have 10 minutes. <laughs> Here's what it looks like in the schools when you compare teacher collaboration, educator collaboration, in the lowest partnership schools, the lower third in the district versus the highest. In the lower third, 17% of educators say that they are talking with each other on a regular weekly basis. In the highest partnership schools, 30% report talking to each other on a regular weekly basis. About four topics, about student performance, about mentoring, about curriculum, or about instructional practice. That's what the conversations are about. We measured that in a variety of ways, including a network analysis which asked each educator, 1,100 educators, who are you talking to in the district, what are you talking about, and how are you doing it, formally, informally, and these are the results. The difference is statistically significant, almost twice the amount of dialogue in the high partnership schools versus the low partnership schools. Here's what's going on in terms of the change in labor management relationships between the principals and the building reps. In the high partnership schools, you see 58% of the part of the building reps and the principals reporting daily communications with each other, with the other 42% saying at least weekly. So 100% of the high partnership districts are having communications between principals and building reps on at least a weekly basis, the majority on a daily basis. If you compare that to the lower partnership schools, only 15% have communications daily between the principal and the building rep. 31% say they only talk to each other at the monthly faculty meeting. Again, an important and statistically significant difference. Ken talked, oh, Ken talked earlier about hierarchy. Didn't you? Didn't you say the word hierarchy? <laughs> you meant to. If you didn't, Ken meant to say hierarchy. <laughs> and you can imagine this being a central office and different schools in the system. You can imagine it being a high school and different departments. We go back to an industrial model. This is the way most organizations have been organized for the last hundred years. And it's good for some things. It's terrible if things don't change. If you can have a stable environment where things don't change, this kind of an organization works really well. If you're faced with change, this organization's rather static. And to solve problems, oh yes, the pointer. To solve problems between two departments, to solve problems between two schools, you tend to have to go up the chain of command, get a decision here, and then go back down. What you'd like is, I didn't do that. <laughs> what you'd like is something that is more lateral, which it allows communication and problem solving to take place at the point in which problems occur. Because it's more efficient, it's more rapid, and more issues will get addressed. But hierarchies tend not to do that. You need a different organizational form. That form is typically called a network. And here is a network from the ABC School District. It's a middle school, high-performing middle school, award-winning middle school in a poor part of the district. Every one of the turquoise symbols there is an educator within that school. Uh, the circles are teachers. The square is a principal. The triangle is a building rep. You see their communications with each other. And on the periphery, on the outside, you see their communications with other educators in other schools. The density of communication in this school is 69%. In other words, 69% of the educators, principals, vice principals, teachers, are talking to each other on at least a weekly basis. And so that's what a partnership gives you. It superimposes one kind of organizational form on another. It gives you a network when your organization previously had relied on a hierarchy and that's efficient, and that solves problems at the level in which they are needed to be solved. And I can't say more about that right now, but tomorrow I could. <laughs> so what do the findings say? The findings from this research say that formal union management partnerships improve student performance even in high poverty schools. Partnerships lead to more extensive collaboration between teachers, and that collaboration improves student performance. You all know this. We just put some numbers to it. This is something I'm sure everybody in this room already knew. 
Partnerships lead to more frequent and more informal communication between union representatives and principals, and partnerships are institutional networks that share information, that share information and diffuse, share information and diffuse innovation. How do you build them? They're hard. They're harder to sustain than they are to start. It's hard to start partnerships, but it's more difficult to sustain them. You have to align interests between management and teachers. There needs to be a focus on teaching and learning. It's not simply about getting along. There have to be organizational structures in place at the district and at the school level to sustain them. These are systems. They're not programs that can be added on to your current system. They mean fundamental changes in the way you do business not a parallel structure. You need strong leadership, leadership development, and succession planning, and the school boards in the community need to be involved in, as partners. There needs to be significant capacity building, establishing cultures of collaboration, sharing leadership, identifying priorities for improvement, guiding problem-solving opportunities and activities, engaging faculty and staff in improvement, getting a chance to see nationally what the best practices and models are, assessing and measuring success, and building capacity around problem identification, joint decision making, joint problem solving, joint planning, joint implementation, team building, conflict resolution, and the use of data. What are the policy implications? What does this mean if you take it beyond the schools and beyond the districts? We need institutional support. These can't survive absent strong institutional support from the state. We need learning networks across districts that are interested in collaborative approaches that link experience with inexperienced districts. You're doing that here today. We need state level resources to build capacity to provide training, skill development, and facilitation. We need state and regional conferences that demonstrate collaborative approaches to improvement and provide technical assistance and publicize examples that allow us to shift the public debate. And we need more research on innovation that works, and we need to share that widely. State level initiatives, I know of four right now. Yours in California, the Massachusetts Ed Partnership, which Ken mentioned and which will be discussed tomorrow. The Consortium for Educational Change, Joe Anderson from Illinois is here. They've been doing this work for over 25 years. And we in New Jersey have established our own collaborative school leadership network that includes all stakeholders, NJEA, AFTNJ, the School Boards Association, School Administr Administrators Association, the Principals Association, including the State Assembly and Senate. Rutgers University, and we've got 20 plus districts. We're doing 13 pilot trainings this summer. We need to find ways to link these initiatives across the state so that we can support each other and we can try to take this to scale. So there's more on this tomorrow if anybody's interested. Um, we'll talk more about student achievement, uh, the impact on union management relations, um, innovation networks, how to sustain this, but my time is up. Thank you very much.